Hi everyone, so welcome to another episode where the mind is going to talk to all of you guys. So uh, we would like to welcome each and every person who is watching this live today. And also we have a couple of few, uh, I mean not few, our very own athletes uh, joining for this uh, program today. We are going to go in more deep conversation about an athlete's mindset. And then also our very own um, guest speaker for today, Bree. And uh, hi, Borini, how are you? Hello, I'm good, hi. thank you. How is your training going? Um, it's going good. I mean, in the lockdown, but it's all right. I mean, can't complain. Okay, so I think I don't, we don't have to make any, uh, the, like, you know, special announcements here we'll get the the guests on board itself hello hello you are not, hello, hello. You are not anymore a, a, a visitor to sri lanka you're you our very own sri lankan now oh thank you thank you i'm i'm an honorary sri lankan i like it yeah <laughs> we're gonna give you a diplomatic passport to come to sri lanka <laughs> all right let's do it <laughs> All right, so welcome, Brie, uh, for another session. And uh, I would like to introduce you to Tobini. is also one of our athletes at our, our organization. Uh, she's a triathlon athlete, and then uh, she's already been qualified for the World Championship uh, next year. Nice. So she's, she's here to ask you more questions related to uh, an athlete. And before, before we start, I want to do like a small icebreaker where... Uh, you told me that you want to learn the Sri Lankan language. So we are going to start off by, uh, you know, in- introducing you to a new word, new Sri Lankan word. So okay. that next time you come on a live session, you can start by, you know, uh, okay. This speaking be great. about it. Okay. So the word we are going to teach you is like, you know, how you say welcome or hi to someone in Sri Lankan. So it's called, are you Bowan? Are you Bowan? Yes, superb. That's okay. great. Okay, are you born? Are you born? All right, that's good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> okay, so to start off, um, uh, we'll let Pubini introduce herself to you a bit, and then uh, we'll straight away go on to our questions. Okay. All right, go ahead, Pubini. All right. So, uh, hi, Brit. Uh, I'm Pubini. Uh, I am a triathlete in Sri Lanka. So I have been training for about two and a half years now and then been competing in uh, Ironman 70.3. And also I represented Sri Lanka for South Asian Games in 2019. So I am currently uh, a national athlete in the Sri Lanka team. Um, apart from being an athlete, I am also a co-founder of a startup company uh, in Sri Lanka is called Run Club, uh, and it's a sportswear brand uh, based in Sri Lanka. So that's about me. <laughs> nice. Congratulations okay, so, on all of those accomplishments. Thank you. <laughs> so welcoming all the viewers, and uh, so and then let's get on to our session. Povini, over to you. All right, so, um, so Bryn, uh, I'm going to start off with asking you a little bit of questions. So I'm sure most of our viewers today um, were there for the last previous session and had a lot of nice conversations going. So I have a few more questions to ask from you um, in an athlete point of view. Um, some things that we kind of face um, every day in our athlete life. Um, and some of the questions were actually asked from the audience um, in one of my previous posts that I posted a few days ago. So let's start with the first one. Okay. This one is from our audience. So I'm just going to read it to you. Um, this is about sometimes athletes can develop a depressed negative mindset because of uh, situations he or she faces um, in their training background. Um, it could be bullying or could be being cornered or 
mistreated by other fellow athletes um and the question they are asking from you is that is it worthy to continue to be in that environment while facing all of this because you love sport love the sport um and if it's but if it's still making you like mentally down all the time but they ask me worth it and how do you face that kind of situation All right, thank you for that question. And just first and foremost, I want to say thank you to Sanjay, thank you to you Puvi for what you guys have done to uh, you know, set the stage for this. For all of you listening, please make sure that you are following both Puvi and Sanjay because they're always bringing you the heat as far as the great content is what I mean. Um and secondly to the person or lastly to the person who uh you know did this question thank you. Um I first want to say I empathize with your situation. I I don't I've never been in it myself. I didn't have an um I definitely had bad coaches, but I never had an environment where I felt bullied or uncomfortable. I always felt very comfortable as an athlete. One thing I would suggest um in this scenario is we have to condition our mind for certain conditions right uh we have to condition our mind to be in certain environments and with that being said if it is a place that's not healthy and it is the only way that you can access sport then i am going to say that you need to evaluate how much you love it if your decision and this is important if your decision is to stay then now we have to work on our mindset to be able to be immune in that environment to that criticism or to that bully right so in in any sport it is competitive there are people that have what's called a scarcity mentality which is there's only so many triathletes in the country of sri lankan and only one of us can be on the top so if i can get into your head mentally and then that causes you to perform less then then that makes more room for me now we want to have what's called a growth or abundance mindset and we want to even though this person is you know sending a lot of hate our way we don't want to send hate back cuz the worst thing you can do is answer negativity with negativity um the best thing for you to do if you're going to decide to stay in that environment because environment is very key to success right it's all about your environment you want support you want i mean of course you thrive in an environment where people are like do it you got this we believe in you and when you're in an environment that's toxic it can be very challenging It is not impossible however to be successful in that environment if you decide that you are going to be successful in that environment. One of the ways is to start conditioning your mind to not take anything personally because it's not about you it's about them. They are feeling insecure so they're trying to take you down a peg. Now if they are physically threatening you and physically putting you in harm's way, I'm going to say get the hell out of that environment. I and I know that means you might not be able to do sport But I mean if they're hurting you that's different but if it's an emotional hurt then we have to gear gird ourselves up you know uh mentally to get to a place where we're going to have a self conversation with ourselves in the mirror before we leave the house we're going to tell ourselves who we are remind ourselves what we have what we're offering in this sport what we're bringing to the table so that when that person says these words We just have that continued conversation in our mind. We don't bring them in on the conversation. We just say, "You know what? Sure, you can bring whatever you want at me. I love this sport enough to not let you take it away from me." We think we have no power in that situation. I love my sport enough that you're not going to I'm going to let you know that I'm here every day. When they feel like they're getting to you, that's fuel for them. When you show them that you're impervious to what they're saying, that is going to be they're going to get tired. They're going to get exhausted. They're going to get bored with you. And they'll go pick on the next person that they are affecting. So we have to work on developing a certain mindset to be in that environment if we're choosing to stay in it. If we are not if we are we can't blame them if we choose to stay. Does that make sense? So we can't be like it's your fault 
that I, you know, that, oh, that guy's a jerk. Yeah, he might be a jerk or she might be a jerk. But that, if it's my choice to stay, then I need to make it so that it's a safe place for me to stay. And I have to do that and take responsibility of myself. Does that make sense? Yes, definitely. I so think fun. that's a really that's, good answer. Yeah. yeah I think I, I, was, I was mind blown by the answer, actually. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Go for it, Pumini. Your, your, it's um, your turn so, today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, so, Bryn, I've got another question to you. Um, okay. This is about discipline and motivation. Um, so something that I have experienced and believe in is that discipline beats motivation. Discipline triumphs motivation. Um, however, at times, it's hard to kind of follow that ideology. Um, what are your thoughts on it? And if you do agree on it, um, how do I prove my consistency through discipline? Yeah. I think it's... I think the the fault in that statement is that it's discipline or motivation. It needs to be discipline and motivation. We've been taught into this binary thinking, right? It's this or it's that. But that's a lie. We've all been lied to. We got to choose, right? Which one is it? You're right. Motivation can be fleeting in the sense that it feels really good when I first start running, but what am I doing in mile 22, right? Because I know you're a, a triathlete, so you're running a long time. So how do you help yourself? One, yes, discipline is very essential to an athlete, but motivation, passion is what keeps you going to get to that goal line, you know, because discipline feels it just doesn't feel good. It's not sexy. You need both, right? It's like, if I just put a bunch of bland food in front of you that was all the same color, even if it tasted good, you're kind of like, thank you. This is wonderful. Part of how you digest food is your eyes, right? Your nose. This is why we have the senses. So you have to pull other things, right? So part of when you're running, the beautiful landscape in Sri Lanka in this particular area might be what keeps you going. And that's motivation. That's not discipline. That's not, that's not, you know, that thing. So what I would say is, is to find different ways to give yourself dopamine hits. Um, to be able to, uh, sorry, I'm hearing some noise. I, I, I don't want to be sure that it's not, it's not me. Okay. Yeah. Um, discipline. It, so, you know, like the big thing is, and I talked about this, I think the last time I was on, which was when you're running a marathon, right? I didn't have a one mile goal. I didn't have a five mile goal. I didn't have a 10 mile goal. All I had was the end result. The problem is discipline's not going to get you there. Yes, if you keep running, you'll get consistent, you'll, you'll be there, but will you get there when you want to get there? Will you get there in your goal time and all that? So you need a little bit of motivation along the way. So one of the things I used to do that helped me, and this is just as not a triathlete, so please, you know, did, but I found something that motivated me to get to the next mile. Right. I found something. So like I used to say, for example, I can see a stop sign at the end of my street. I don't know if you guys have stop signs, but the point is, is that I could see it. So I would be like, OK, you just got to get to that stop sign. Then I would pick, OK, that tree down there. I just got to get to that tree. Then I would pick something else because that helped me keep going. My discipline is what got me in the race, what trained me for that day. But my motivation is going to be a big part of why I'm going to keep running. Does that make sense? So it's not either or, it's both. But I definitely think that if you're all motivation, you're flawed. And if you're all discipline, you're flawed. So in that regard, you got to, yeah, you got to, I mean, there's a, it's about the hard work. But the problem is, is that in order for it to become more flowing, there has to be dopamine hits. There has to be something that charges you up to get you through that next mile, to get you through that next rep, to, you know, regardless of what sport it is, whether, I mean, we know running is all mental, right? Other than the physical moving of your legs, but it's the same for any sport. When you're tired, your mental has to take over. And so that is what my advice would be on that is not to prioritize one over the other, but to mix the two. Okay, uh, since, uh, since actually this question was about discipline and motivation, uh, Breen, like I, I want to, I, I just came up with this question. 
Okay. So, uh, before that, I want everyone to like you know uh, mention or comment the sports, the sport that they are doing on our comment section, so that we can get to know you know what are the sports that they are you know into. And my question for you is like last time you spoke about self talk, right? Uh, one of the key like, out of the three key points that you gave me, one of the main things was self talk. Yeah. So how how do you like in a situation like this where she's running like a like a marathon like you know a, a very very right. long distance how do you create this self talk before a competition and during the competition do you talk to yourself while running like you know how <laughs> how do you how do you implement this well let's ask poovy do you talk to yourself while running yes yes, yes. <laughs> she's having a whole conversation up here man <laughs> He could possibly turn it off. She's maybe thinking about now what happens when you're running for a long time or swimming for a long time or biking for a long time is you are or or playing basketball or you know uh 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 hockey, soccer, whatever it is, football, excuse me, don't mean to use that American imperialist term, soccer because we have to na- rename everything. But the point is is that no matter what you're doing you're having a conversation in your head. The quality of that conversation is what comes into key, right? So when I ran, right? When I was a runner, one of the first things that my mind would tell me was that my legs were tired, which is usually a lot, right? It's like, oh, you, you know, come on, you can stop. You're tired, you know? But if I could train this, right? then I could get through the next mile and the next mile. Now, I was a sprinter, so I'm going to be honest, Poovy. I ran a marathon, but let's be real. I was a sprinter. I wanted to be done in a certain amount of seconds. I did not want to be running for long periods of time. Um, when, but the discipline that it takes, right, is everything comes through repetition. You have to start training yourself to have that quality of conversation on a regular basis. We should be talking to ourselves, whether it be out loud or in our head, of course, mindful around who you're around if you're concerned about the judgment of others. Um, And, I mean, because all you have to do is put your AirPods in, somebody will think you're on the phone, okay? Those of you that had headphones, just put some headphones in. You can have a whole conversation with yourself on the way to work. No one would know because they'd be like, oh, she's on the phone or he's on the phone. But have a conversation. I have this. So like sometimes when I'm driving, for example, I'll say, I live in a world that is always safe. I am constantly being, uh, good things are always coming to me. Fabulous events I'm being invited to. Right now, someone is speaking about me that I don't even know, like Sanjay, right? Sanjay's thinking about how he can do another live with me. I didn't know Sanjay. I just said someone, my, my name is being mentioned in countries and places I've not, in rooms I'm not even in. And then all of a sudden, Sanjay reaches out to me. So it's having the quality of these conversations on a regular basis with no attachment to oh is it true do i believe it because your brain is like a computer your your feet you know garbage in garbage out if i'm telling myself i'm tired my legs are tired oh i don't know if i can go another mile suddenly that next mile is the hardest mile you have if you start having a better conversation now all of a sudden a mile passed and you almost didn't feel it if that makes sense. I am not, you know, and I know I'm talking a lot about running, but this is the same for weightlifting. I am the strongest person in the room. If you're a basketball, I've got a great shot and a great touch. I always, you know, I'm, I'm in the right spot for defense. I have a way of seeing the floor that makes it easier for me to make the moves to facilitate the right offense. Whatever sport you're playing, you need to be having a more quality conversation. If you're getting value from this conversation, please share it because you know there's someone that is missing out on this conversation. So share it right now. Everybody, make sure you invite one, two, five people in here to say you're missing out. You need to get this because whether you play sports or not, this is important. You can have this conversation. I'm not content. I'm not currently an athlete. Like, right? I I mean, of course, I'm always going to have the athlete mindset, be competitive, those type of things. But I'm not currently in a competitive space other than business. So I'm still having this conversation with myself on a regular basis. Sometimes I want to talk about how tired I am or how much I'm not where I want to be. But that doesn't make my day shorter. It makes it longer. It makes it harder. My advice to all of you is to have to to have conversations regularly and 
to not worry about the attachment to that, you know, like whatever. But when you're, and then when you're in that race, now Poovy has trained her mind to talk differently. So when that negative thought comes, cause it will, because our brain is designed to protect us, which is like, yo, you're hot, you're tired. Did you know that you've been running for a long time? You just go, duh, but I got this. All my training has been for this moment. Everything I have done up to this point has prepared me for this next mile. So I'm gonna need you to get on the same page with me, mind, cause we're doing this. Okay, so that's the kind of, so you almost have to have a pep talk with yourself. You need to be giving yourself pep talks in your training. You need to make that, everybody focuses on the reps. Everybody focuses on how many miles do I have to run today? My question to you is, where on your list of training things is, what is, you know, how many conversations do I have to have with myself? Did I give myself my pep talk? Was my pep talk present in today's workout? That's what you need to add to your training regimen. And then when you okay. get in the race, it'll be natural. Otherwise, it's yeah. forced, and you don't believe it. True, true, true. Also, to everyone who's watching, uh, uh, Brain's uh, Apple podcast is the mental for, uh, advantage. For like, what, what, I can't remember. Uh, mental. The Mental Advantage podcast. You do have to yeah. put the whole thing with the the because there's yeah. another guy that has uh, a mental and so, also, it became the number one sports podcast in Sri Lanka that we need to celebrate, you know, we, when you come here, that, you know, you were number one yes. in Sri Lanka. And I'm sure yes. that people are going to uh, subscribe into your podcast after this and then you will at least stay the number one, like, you know. Yeah, we need more. We need number one in yeah. Sri Lanka again, please. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Puvini, your, your question. All right. Um, so next question is about goals and setting goals. Um, so let me bring a small example of what I'm talking about. For example, New Year's resolutions. Um, everyone, like all of us, um, at some point in our lives, uh, every end of the year, we set, try to tell ourselves, okay, I'm going to stop uh, smoking or I'm going to stop drinking. Oh, I'm going to um, work towards losing a couple of pounds. Um, and for each of us, it's different. For me, it would be, I'm going to hit my next 5K PR or something like that. Right? But most of the times and almost all the times, these goals does not last. That's and right. Throughout the year, we try to set goals that, are just goals. We just say that, okay, I'm going to do this, but it never happens or we just never work towards it. Right? Yeah. Uh, so tell me how can someone set realistic goals and how or what do you do to do to kind of stick to it and follow it through? No, excellent. Excellent question. Excellent question. All right. So I'm going to answer this question in different ways. We know New Year's res resolutions don't work, right? So, for example, if I uh, identify, like Poovy, as a triathlete, right, and I go out and try to become a weightlifter, right, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go in and lift more weights than the guy that lifts weights, right, then it's, it's, it's not going to work. So why is that? Because Poovy is a triathlete. That's what she identifies as. And, you know, now we talk a lot about identity in the athlete space, and sometimes we're a little too identified with our sport, but we're going to talk about that for another time. What's important when setting a goal is you need to add an element of the reason why New Year's resolutions don't work is because you're trying to um, become some, you're trying to accomplish something with the same identity as you had yesterday. So in other words, if I spent all last week on the couch watching Netflix and I'm like, yeah, I'm a Netflix because now I'm identifying as a Netflix watcher, right? And then I'm like, oh, tomorrow, because it's January 1st, I am not going to watch any more TV, even though I got all my reps in watching TV the month before. It's going to be very difficult for me to maintain that because I was consistent in watching television and now I identify as a TV watcher, right? If I want to accomplish the goal, first, you, okay, here's what I want to do. I want to watch less TV or I want to take TV out of my life. Then I need to change my identity as someone 
who maybe I identify more as a reader, as a reader. So I'm a reader. Um, that's what I do in my spare time. I'm a reader. Now my identity is different. So when I go to pick up that remote, if I remind myself I'm a reader, then I don't need that. I can, I can eventually program myself out of that. And then that goal becomes more realistic. But again, it's not how, many, it's not, um, how, how long, because of course we've been told 21 days, a new habit, it's how many reps. So how many reps am I going to have to remind myself that I'm a reader before it takes effect? I had to watch enough shows on Netflix to become a Netflix watcher. It's going to take me a certain amount of reps to become with this new identity of a reader. But if I just say, I'm going to read 10 books this year, but I've spent more time watching TV, and so I'm more of a TV watcher than I am a reader, then I'm going to keep saying, you know, I'm not a reader. So I know I want to read a book, but I'm not really a reader. But I heard good people read, so I'm going to read. And then, or, or I might be telling myself, every time I try to read a book, I fall asleep. I get tired. I can't stay up. So if I keep telling myself that, which I used to, by the way, because I didn't like, I mean, I think school ruins reading for you, but that's my own opinion. Um, because, you know, they don't assign the good books, right? They assign the boring books. I know I said it. I'm okay with it. You have the people from Sri Lanka that are in the education system. Go ahead, write me a letter. But, uh, you know, they, but the point is, is that if you identify as the person that does the thing, so in other words, I'm going to be more cleanly, for example. So then I'm more organized. I'm an organized person. I am not. I'm telling you that like in honesty. But if I keep identifying as someone who's disorganized, then I give myself the excuse to not accomplish the goal. If I change my identity to at least give me the right environment for there to be success, right? To plant that seed of I am organized. And then I take action in, 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 um, in alignment with that identity. Then all of a sudden it's different. Does that make sense? If you are someone who is uh, just making a goal with no attachment to an identity or the right environment to support that, I, that, that goal, then you will fail 99 times out of 10. If you make a, a 5K goal, you said like my next PR, then it's like I am, you need to start identifying as someone who's already accomplished that PR. So then it becomes, okay, then I'm already there. Now, how do I continue to keep going in that vein so that that becomes a reality? So then I have to find a new identity that I, you know, I'm, a, I'm or it doesn't have to be that specific PR if that's too hard. It could just be I'm a, a, a 5K runner. Who who's, who's always setting new PRs or who's always accomplishing, sorry, new PRs, because anyone can set new PRs, but always accomplishing new PRs, right? And so now it's like, okay, cool. So now every time I go out, my goal is in alignment with my identity. Therefore, I feel compelled and I'm motivated to go out and do it versus if I don't like doing dishes and I'm like, I'm just not a dish person, then I'm going to use that as an excuse not to be a part of my household, which is going to create strife. Does that make sense? Cause I never do the dishes. And I'm like, well, I just don't do dishes. That's just the way it is. And now I have hard, I have pr trouble on the home front because I've decided that that's not who I am. So. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Before, before Povini goes to your final question, I actually have a couple of questions. I'll uh, ask my question and then I'll let uh, Povini ask. So okay. this is actually a question. You just said you had a couple I, of questions. So now you only have one question, Sanjay? Uh, no. So I'm going to ask now one. And then after Povini asks, I'm going to ask you. Oh, one. I see. All right. I'm just keeping <laughs> track of the numbers there. Okay, go ahead. All right. <laughs> so... Uh, my question, I think I, I, I really wanted to ask you this question last time, but you know, we ran out of time last time. So my question for you is uh, like, we, we see a lot of uh, athletes on social media, right? And then uh, social media is something good and also there's a bad side to it. How do you, how do you tell some, tell an athlete or advise an athlete, you know, how, how they should manage their social media and then these negative comments that they get, how do you tell someone to react or like, you know, set their mindset saying, okay, just a bad, this is just a bad comment. I'm going to leave it out. How do you set your mind to that? Excellent, excellent question. Uh, it's funny because I was just talking about this on my podcast uh, last this week when interviewing a guest on an episode that hasn't. Yeah, really I, I listened to that, so that's why I wanted to. Uh, okay. Bring it out here. <laughs> All right. Good. 
Uh, when I was uh, talking to one of my NBA athletes, because they get a lot of negative comments, right? The public is your fair weather friend, right? They are, they love you when you're doing great and they have a whole bunch to say when you're not doing great, right? And the important thing is, is some people, there's some schools of thought that say, you know, it makes me tougher to read those comments. Now, you can tell yourself that, and that may be true, I suppose. I'll allow it. However, I'm going to push back because I think that if you haven't trained your mind, you're just putting grass over a hole. You're like, yeah, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't get to me, except if you have five bad games in a row. I think it's going to get to you on some level because it's going to feed in to the negative energy and ne all energy has momentum. So when you have negative energy, which also is a really powerful force, it's like a black hole. You can't get out of it. So once you start giving yourself that negative conversation and then someone affirms, because all it is is affirmation and confirmation, because we're looking for confirmation bias. That's how our brain is. You sucked, right? That's what you told yourself. That was terrible. That was a terrible game. I don't know what I was doing. I was all over the place. This is the content of the conversation, unfortunately, of someone who's not well-versed in how to process mistakes, loss, whatever. But this is the conversation we're having. When you make a mistake, I'm so stupid. I can't believe I did that. Then you go to your social media and somebody says, you suck. You were terrible. And so while you may tell yourself, oh, this guy's a jerk, he's just buying a keyboard, he doesn't know what he's talking about, your brain's going, aha, there it is. We're right on with what we're thinking. So even though you're going to tell yourself, you're going to tell yourself something, your brain is looking for things that it's the reticular activating system. This is why you, when you buy a new car or you want a new car, what, what kind of car do you like, Puvini? What kind of car? Do you have a car that's big in Sri Lanka that you've always wanted or anything like that or a color? Yes, a Mustang. <laughs> a Mustang. Is that what you said? Okay. Yes. So everywhere you go, if Puvini doesn't have a Mustang, or even if she does, she's most likely going to notice all of a sudden, like, there's Mustangs everywhere. Now, the interesting thing was the same amount of Mustangs were on the road the day but because Puvini didn't decide to focus her brain on Mustangs, she didn't see them. But now it feels like everyone has a Mustang. And the only person that doesn't have a Mustang is Puvini if she doesn't have one sometimes. That's the way we're thinking. Like, man, everybody's got a Mustang. There's a red one, a blue one, whatever. It's everywhere. But our brain is looking for patterns. So when you are saying to yourself you sucked and someone else is telling you on social media you sucked, your brain's like, okay, cool. Now we know. Now, emotions are triggered, right, by those things. Now, of course, some people will say, like I said, it doesn't affect them, but it does because all of our stress and all these things, sometimes you're, there's things happening in your body that you're not aware of. It's important to me that you either, until you become the kind of mind, and again, this is training, this is lifetime, this is knowing self, this is, a, this is not an overnight thing, this is an over life thing. You must continue to work on your mind to the point that you could read that and it would have no effect on you. However, most people are not there yet. And we're talking about Tibetan monks and people who spend their whole life literally in meditation working on that. And until you become a monk, which I don't, I'm not saying you got to be a monk. Okay. Then I would say that I would advise you to not read any comments until you are in a place. I mean, one, I wouldn't read them at all. But if you feel like you need to, for some reason, then you need to give yourself a social media uh, diet, or I don't like the word diet, but whatever. You need to do a blackout on your social media until probably until you've had time to process what actually happened in that competition, that game, that race, so that when you come back to it, you're not as attached. For example, I facilitate workshops with kids. They are constantly bored. It doesn't matter. I can tap dance. I can do juggling. I could do anything. I don't tap dance or juggle, but I'm just saying I could do anything to entertain them. And somebody would be absolutely, oh, this is the most boring workshop ever. She was loud. She was this. She was that. That's fine. So they fill out evaluations after the workshop. I do not read them. 
then I get an email from my supervisor three weeks from now saying, here's the content of those evaluations. Now I'm in a place to look at it objectively. But right after, when I think I did a great job and I'm feeling pretty high off of the five kids that I affected, even though it's a room of 150 kids, but there's a kid that came up to me and said, that was great. Oh my God, you changed my life. Or I love that. Or, oh my gosh, I'm going to, I'm going to focus on that. But if I hear that one kid, that's what I'm going to go home driving thinking about. That that kid felt I was boring or this was terrible or they need to just stop doing these workshops. Because so you can't make everyone happy. You're not going to. So I decide to focus on what was good and process what I need to of like, what was my evaluation of the day? It also robs me of having my own evaluation of the day versus the other. So my recommendation would be block out social media for at least 72 hours after a competition. Take your time to focus on what was good, what could have gone better. And then, you know, once you're in a place where you're like, okay, now I know what to focus on for my next training session, my next competition. I'm in a good place. If you want to go back and read it, if you feel like you need to, then I would say you're probably addicted. But if you feel like you need to, go ahead. But I would also, you know, but I would say that you're just not in a place to process that information right after competition. So I would say avoid it at all costs um, and know that those people are just uh, projecting onto you and you're allowing them if you decide to take it in. Again, responsibility. When you said react, we don't react. Elite athletes don't react. They respond. Oh, yeah. Okay. Elite react athletes don't react. They respond. Because reaction is boom, respond is what happened, here's my choices, and then you choose. Now, yes, it can still happen in an instant, but you train yourself to respond, not to react. Because reaction can be very uh, dangerous at times. Now, I'm uh, not talking about your instinct. I mean, obviously, you have uh, reflexes, and those are good. A reflex is different than a reaction and then a response. So response is the next level of responding to life. And Joel had a question in the chat, just so you yeah. guys know. Okay. Joel, Joel is our friend, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so what he's saying is, um, what about using negative comments to motivate yourself? Does that sort of thinking help or does it not work in the long run? Well, you know, uh, like, you know, you better not quit. You, you know, you, got, you suck if you quit. You know, that type of stuff, right? It's that type of negative motivation, right? And I will say that it works. But I will say that it's, it, it is detrimental in the long run. You are training yourself to believe that you have to talk to me. The thing is, is positivity is more powerful. But negativity feels more powerful. Let me say that. I'm going to say it again. Ne po positivity is more powerful, but negativity feels more powerful because we're just affected by it more, right? We have coaches that go, you're, you know, you're terrible. Get your head out of your butt. What are you doing? Right. And we're like, uh, 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 right. And then we'll do something. So we go, oh, that works. Okay. Let me do that again. So what that's called is, um, I'm reading a book and it's, uh, this is thinking in bets by Annie, uh, Annie Duke. And it's about, um, something called resulting which is because I got this result, I'm assuming that the impetus or the motivation for that was correct. But that's the thing. Just because it got a result, you don't know what the result would be if you had fed yourself the other thing. Now you say, but I tried positivity. Well, it's because you don't believe it. You believe the negativity. So it's you putting more emphasis on the negativity that actually is giving the result. So if you had the same belief in the positivity, it would produce the same result or an even better result. But because we believe that this is the way, then this is the way. If we believe this is the way, then this is the way for that person, right? So it's just retraining your mind around positivity versus negativity. Or as some people say, neutral. Just, you know, you can't change your car from um, forward to backward without stopping in neutral. So maybe you could just take a more, you know, neutral lens and then apply the positive to it versus the negative. And that will give you um, the next step. But that's what I would say. It, it depends on what you value. And so if you place value on the negative, it will work. But if you place value on the positive, it will work. But the question is, what is it doing to your self-esteem and you in the long run? 
So yes, exactly, Joel. In the long run, is very important. Okay, Bhuvan. Uh, before your before your question, there was a question from the audience that was asked. Uh, actually, uh, one of our colleagues was the one who asked this. Uh, in the midst of this current global crisis, okay, uh, it is like a normal thing for anyone to feel like very emotional that they don't have the motivation. I'm sure Bhuvan can relate to this as well. uh like they they feel they feel it's like a emotional roller coaster during this this sort of time so what are your thoughts on how a person could set their mindset to manage this kind of situation yeah so in this situation think me discompassionate if you will but i don't know if you need to call it a global crisis I know the media is calling it that. I know there is loss, but guess what? Prior to this pandemic, there were people dying every minute. There were people sick with disease everywhere. There were things happening. Now, they weren't locking down the world. It wasn't being pumped into your living room with death tolls every day, which I don't know why you would be watching that. But people are like, "Oh my god, did you hear the numbers are up? The numbers are up. The numbers are up." Like a ticker. And it's like Do you, you know what? What if we always had a ticker? This is how many people died yesterday. This is how many people are sick. This is how many people are doing terribly and homeless and you know, yeah, if you're focusing on that, it would be very hard to ever be happy, to be joyous, to feel like there's hope. I understand that they're making it difficult for you to train Pubini. I understand that it's not as easy to be an athlete in this time when you identify as an athlete and they're taking the one thing that gives you joy away from you. But see the thing is is that you go back to a story like a Nelson Mandela or another gentleman who was in prison who was a great concert pianist. The whole time he was in prison, they took away everything he ever loved, his freedom, his love of outdoors, you know, whatever, his piano. He didn't have access to a piano. So you know what he did? He practiced piano every day. every day in his cell he heard the music in his mind he played it every day when he came out of prison he was just as practiced as if he had been on a piano itself so if they take away the physical they can't take away the mental if they take away the 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 you know they take away your freedom they can't take away where this environment in here you have complete control over that but you have to decide to act out of the programming that they're giving you hey the world is going crazy right now it's terrible guess what I, I, everyone in my household is healthy. That doesn't mean that I'm saying I don't feel for people that are, but I can't stop what's happening. You know, me feeling bad for everyone else is doing nothing but messing with this environment in here. It's creating disease in my body. Does that make sense? It's creating strife inside of me because I can't save the world. So I've decided that like Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. If I want the world to focus more on the positive, the only environment I have control over is my own. The first thing I'm going to tell you is to focus on yourself. That's it. I know you're like that's selfish, Brent. There are people dying. Yes, and they were before the pandemic. And sorry, but they will again and you will die. some day don't say it's going to be tomorrow all i'm suggesting is the media is selling advertising they want you to tune in so that you can buy the yuhu on the next commercial because if you are if you are sad you'll buy the junk food you'll buy the thing you'll take the pharmaceutical drug you'll do the stuff so if they keep you thinking that you need to know what's happening in the world they'll keep selling it to you and you'll keep buying it you want to train your mind unsubscribe to the idea that you need to watch that next news story that you need to know that someone will tell you i promise they will you think i won't know oh someone will call you the sky is falling the sky is falling they'll tell you because they can't they can't they can't resist but your job is to focus on your pristine environment you need to be 100% about what's happening right here in your sphere what you're allowing into that space you can say a silent prayer for all the people that are suffering and move on with your day because you can't do anything else 
The best thing you can do is focus on positivity. If we all cleanse the lens that is ours, the world would get better. It really is. We're trying to fix the world so we can be better. We need to fix us and then the world will get better. If we all just focused on ourselves, the man in the mirror, as Michael Jackson said, literally the world would get better. But we spend so much time like, oh, it's terrible out there. How can I train? How can I keep it? It's hard to focus on good things. It is if you're focusing on bad things. But if you're training your mind to focus on, you know what? Some more people are alive today than died today. More people made it home safe today than got into an accident today. More people didn't get robbed today than got robbed today. But the news wants you to think that that's all that's happening out there. Robbery, death, murder, killing, you know, death, you know, all the things, sickness. And we're like, oh my God, it's hard. How do we focus on anything good? That's because you have to retrain your attention. Thank you. You're not going to hijack me. You're not going to take my happiness because I'm allowed to be happy even though there's suffering in the world. Because I choose even in the midst. And let's say you're going through something hard. You might be listening and go, yeah, Bryn, but I'm going through some hard stuff. I lost some family members. I, my family's having trouble with money. My, you know, I'm being directly affected by this crisis that you say that is not a thing. Okay. You still have control over how you respond. Yes, you lost a family member. And my condolences to you. Grief is a, a, a process and it comes in waves. I will say this though, you're here for a reason. You're still here. So you can live, you can die, you know, and, 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 and decide that you're going to live a meager existence or you're going to go out and accomplish the dreams of what that person who's no longer with us would want you to do. They would want you to live for them. They're, they can't live anymore. So you, what do you, who are you dying for? They want you to live for them, not die for them. Does that make sense? It's a difference, right? There's other people suffering, but that doesn't mean that you can't go get successful and then reach back and go, hey, come with me. Here's the good life. But you're spending so much time trying to be in the muck and the mire with all the suffering instead of rising up and pulling up people with you. Does that make sense? So my, my recommendation is not to be, you know, I'm not saying it's not hard. I'm not saying that it's not a challenge, but I don't find it hard every day to focus on the positive, even in the midst of that, because I don't watch the news. I don't read the news. I don't scroll on social media and look for all the bad news. I just focus on what's going on in my life. And I focus on how I can send energy out and be a good light in the world. So my, it, it, you know, my advice to you is stop watching television even TV shows. I mean, my next episode is going to be all about this, but it's all about what are you digesting? And if you're putting garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. And that's the thing, you know? So, yeah, I know I'm preaching and I'm on a set and Sanjay's probably like, wow, you're really long-winded. No, Stop. I'm like, my, my mind is like blown. Like, you know, it's, it's like yeah. bursting inside. <laughs> yeah. So that's all I want. I want you all to stop. You know, your parents are going to tell you the news because they, they're they addicted to it. The older generation is addicted to the news because they came up on it. But you don't have the most successful people don't watch the news. They might watch financial news because they want to know when to buy, when to sell, that type of stuff. But most successful people don't watch television. Tell live vision. Tell a live vision. They're giving you a version of the world and you're buying into it. So you decide. Are you going to be? That's why they call it programming. What's the program we're going to watch? What program are you giving yourself? And then through all of the media consumption, social media, television, um, you know, whatever, um, print media, we're deciding how to feel. Don't let someone tell you how to feel. You decide. Yes, someone died today. My condolences. Now, what's going on in my world? Right? Someone's sick in my family. What can I do for them? I can be there for them and I can still choose to live a life and be happy. But I, but why should people have to suffer? I don't know, but it isn't God's will for them to suffer. It is the state of the thing, but I can respond to how can I be God's light? How can I be God's love in that situation? Does that make sense? They didn't, they don't need a bunch of people around them sad. They need light. That doesn't mean ignoring the disease, you know, as far as like, you know, making light of it. I don't mean to be like, get out of bed. You're fine. I don't mean that. But you can still say, you know, I love you. Let's 
you know, I want to, I want to remember, do you remember the time we went to the lake that one time, grandma? Do you remember? I remember all the food you used to cook me when you were little. Tell me about that dish you used to make. Like help them focus on the good stuff because they've got enough to focus on with the disease and the illness. Be a source of light, lightness in their, in their day, not, not more heaviness. And so that's how you can help the world become lighter. Just, just lighten yourself of the load of trying to carry the burden for everyone else. Lay your burden down, it says in the Bible, right? Regardless of whether you believe in, breathe in, believe in the Bible, I'm sure it says it in the Bhagavad Gita. I'm sure it says it in the Quran. I'm sure it says it in the Torah. Whatever religious script, it says something about lighten yourself. You know, don't try to carry the loads of the world. Okay? All right. So that's my answer. Sorry it was very long-winded, but yeah. No, it's like, you know, I, I am actually like, very emotional and also like I'm mind blown by the by the facts that you just know. Thank you. Okay. I'm, well, happy, it's, your... I, I'm happy it's reaching. Sorry, Puvini. I know you got questions. We're taking over yeah. your time. Here. <laughs> no, no. I think these are really good things to listen to. Like, I'm learning a lot right now. Good, good. Yeah. All right. So let me get to my final question. Um, this one is also what something that I've got from the audience, from, from one of my followers. Um, it's a very simple question. Uh, basically, it's about asking how and where can we practice mental fitness? Um, and what are the key strategies to kind of, that we can use in our day-to-day -day life? You know, so that's the question. That's a great question. So one answer, one question I'm going to add to your question, which is when. When can we practice mental fitness, right? So write this down. Everybody that's listening, you can only practice mental fitness in the present. In the present. Now. N-O-W. We talked about that last time. Next opportunity waiting, no opportunity wasted. So you can't practice mental fitness in the past. And you can't practice it in the future. You can only practice it in the present. When, when should you do it? All the time. These are, this is more of a when question. All the time. When can you do it? In the grocery store line. When you're sleeping. Right, right before you wake up. Right before you go to sleep. Uh, while you're walking on the way to work. After a conversation. Before a conversation. During a conversation, but you should be present for the conversation, especially if you're holding space for something. So be present. Uh, but it's really important that you're constantly practicing it. So what are some good tips? One, self-talk. We talked about that. Giving yourself just a diet of when you wake up affirmations. I am amazing. I am good. I have everything I need. Something I say on a regular basis, life is always working out for me. Life is always working out for me. Life is always working out for me. Good things are always happening to me. Everything good, everything that comes to me is good. All just stuff like that. Just, and just general. Sometimes you have to stay general because some people have a really hard time with the specific, right? So if you have a hard time with the specific, like I'm winning the triathlon in Sri Lanka, you know, I'm winning this competition. If you're like, oh, that feels too much. I don't know if I'm ready for that. Then you can say, I am constantly having these good outings when I go and do races. I'm always finishing better than I thought I would. I'm always having good results. I'm having easy runs. I'm feeling so much more flow in my process when I'm in a competition. You can say general things, okay? Right? So that's one. Two, you need to start uh, also, uh, sorry, I have my uh, thing on my notebook, so I want to hold it up. All right, journaling. All right, so here I wrote a bunch of statements multiple times, right? And I wrote it in the present, not in the future. So in other words, I will is, okay, so for example, um, people will say, I want to be rich. Okay, that's okay. That's a, that's a D statement, a D, if I'm grading it. I don't know if you guys do letter grades, but okay, that's a 1.0, all right? Uh, the next best statement is, I will be rich. That's a C. Excuse me. All right. Sorry, my phone was ringing. And then the next, the next statement um, is, <clears throat> I am, right? I am rich. That's a, this is a B, okay? I am rich. You're claiming it in the, pre in the present. I am rich. That's a good one, okay? And a B is good. We're going for B is fine. B or better. And then the next one is, 
Uh, well, it, it's, well, let me say, it's really an A. There really is no B or so. Maybe we'll go C, B, A. But I am rich or, hey, did I tell you, like saying things in the past, like imagining, okay, for example, um, let's say Sanjay, what's, your, what's one of your goals, Sanjay? Give me a goal. Um, I want to make sure that my agency becomes the first sports agency and the best sports agency in Sri Lanka. Okay. So let's work with Sanjay. Um, and Puvini, give me a goal. Oh, um, I want to, so in terms of uh, my company, I want to see it in uh, international stage one day. Okay, yeah, so you, in- sorry, sorry, you want to be, your company, you want to be internationally known. Is that correct? Okay, internationally known. All right, so the one is, in some instances, specificity, right? So you could be internationally known for uh, polluting a body of water near your house. So, you know, technically everyone would know about it, but do you want to be internationally known for that? So what do you want, right, more specifically? So what do you want to be internationally known how? Like, what do you want to be known for? For sportswear and uh, for the sustainability aspect that we are going after. And I want it to be more functional, adaptable for anyone who is an athlete or a beginner, anyone okay. who think of or oh, need a running up teacher. You know? Okay, awesome. So you want to have a, a, a very successful, this is important, sustainable sportswear line that uh, is for anyone that wants to work out or go all the way up to be a professional athlete, correct? Okay, nice. And Sanjay, you want your comp- you want your your agency to be well known and successful for athletes all over Sri Lanka, correct? Uh yeah. So my two year goal is to be known in Sri Lanka, and then my five year goal is to get into South Asia. Okay. So I like two year, five year, but I don't know if I like two year, five year goals. I'm just gonna be honest. I like that you yeah. have a goal that's two year, five year, but. What if it happens in one year, right? So, you know, because we're, we're open to that. Here's another book I'm going to recommend you. Try to find it, Sanjay. All right, get them to send it to you, okay? It talks about quantum okay. leaps, right? And it's all about, like, not necessarily putting a timeline on your goals, but I know smart goals, time, measurable, all that. And then you said realistic. That's right, Puvini. I meant to talk about that. Ah, bull, no, no realistic goals. I don't like realistic goals because it causes us to kind of water down our goals sometimes. Now, I understand. I, I'm not saying. What I'm saying is take the big goal and then bite size it so that that's fine. But don't use the term realistic because I don't know what that means because it's realistic for you to be internationally known as a sustainable sportswear brand, right? Like, well, not tomorrow. Well, I don't know. Some people, you know, do become overnight success after 10 years. So you just don't know when that pivot point is going to happen, the tipping point, like Malcolm Gladwell talks about. But anyway, my advice in these statements would be I want to be a, so we'll go with Puvini's and then you'll adapt your Sanjay. I want to be a sustainable sportswear brand that accommodates athletes all over the world or all over my country. Okay. All right. Great. I will be a sustainable sportswear brand that accommodates athletes all over my country. That's a little bit more momentum. But I am the owner, creator, founder of a sportswear brand that provides sportswear for athletes all over the country that's comfortable and, you know, and adaptable to their their sports, okay? Now, you want to up-level it. I am a seven-figure business owner of a sportswear brand that, you know, right. So it's just how can you tweak it? And these are mental fitnesses where you're challenging yourself to think differently, to think more in concrete, and you're claiming that on a regular basis. The universe, God, whatever you want to call it, it likes to respond to you. So when you say, I want, you get more wanting. So it just feels like the distance between you and your goal is continuing to be the same distance. When you say I am, you're there and you're calling it forth. Does that make sense? So you're saying, okay, I'm already there in my mind. So now that I'm the owner, how how would the owner of a sustainable seven-figure business get up today? How would the owner of a, of a, of a sports agency that's world-renowned walk in this store? How would he approach the next person he wants to ask to do a live with? 
how would she approach this supplier, right? I am the owner of a seven-figure business, and so I'm going to tell them, like, this, as a supplier, right, as a, as a supplier for me, I want you to know that we are looking to serve countries all over the world. So I need to know that you're going to be the kind of supplier that I can grow with. Are you, and, and I need a deal that's going to make it worthwhile for me to do business with you in long term. So now I'm negotiating a different deal versus uh, I want to be that someday. So therefore, I'm going to ask for less because I feel less. Ver you know, so how do you practice mental fitness? You start to, one, you start to put, you start to talk differently. You start to act differently. You start to see yourself differently. And you do these little exercises in the mirror every day of where am I being less than? Where am I feeling like, oh, Bryn's so amazing because she's in the United States and I'm in Sri Lanka. And it's like, whatever. I mean, I'm just one person. I'm nobody. I mean, yes, I'm somebody. But what I'm saying is I'm no better than you. Me being born in the United States doesn't make me better than anyone else. I just happen to be in a country that's considered the best in the world, but who cares about that? That doesn't, I don't think that's true, right? That's what, that's PR for the U.S. That's just PR. That's what they've been telling everybody. This is the best country on earth. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. That doesn't, that, that, that I, I have a problem with that because then that means that Sanjay and Puvini and everybody listening, I was born in Sri Lanka, doesn't get to be born in the best country on earth. BS, belief system, I'm not buying it. So everybody has the same process, same ability and access to success. The only thing keeping you from success is you. So uh, yes, right, there's certain opportunities, but there's plenty wasted here too. There's plenty of people in the U.S. that are like, oh, I don't have what I need. And, you know, so we're, we, we can feel just as sorry for ourselves. We can just be, we can waste and squander just as, just as easily as the next person. So it's, it's important not to put somebody on a pedestal to see yourself on the same level. Who's the most successful and richest person that you know, Sanjay, in Sri Lanka that you're like, man, I don't know if I can talk to them. Who is it? Do you know a name? Uh, yeah, or, I know. His name is Dammika Pereira. Oh, say it again. Dammika Pereira. Dammika Pereira. All right, yes. so Dominic yes. Pereira gets out of bed and puts his pants on the same way you do, all right? He's, he has troubles. He has moments where he doesn't feel like he's good enough. He has moments. Now, you may not see those, but the point is, it's important for you to recognize that he's not out of reach for you because if we're all one, then he's just as close as somebody in another country. The question is, who do I know that can get me in touch with Damika Pereira because he needs to know about me so he can introduce me to the right people that can take my sports and in, in, sports uh, empire to the next level, right? So who do I know that I need and what rooms do I need to be in to be with people like Damika Pereira? Who do I need to be around who's the best in the sports apparel industry right now in Sri Lanka that I need to know? That I need to know about what I'm trying to do. That I need to figure out how do I get in touch with these people. But not. Oh, but I have to believe more in myself. So when you talk about mental exercises, one is self-talk, one is seeing yourself differently. But it's starting to talk, just the content of your conversation start. Then visualization. You need to hear. So in other words, if I heard Domico Pereira on the news, I would start to hear him saying, Oh, have you met Sanjay? He's the owner of the top sports agency in Sri Lanka. You need to meet him. He's representing the top talent that we have in Sri Lanka, and he's putting Sri Lanka on the map globally for us again, right, or whatever. For the first time, you know, people in other countries are going to know the name of our Sri Lankan athletes. He's not as slim as Sanjay. He's probably not as, as attractive as Sanjay either. He's not as handsome. I understand. So the point is, whatever it is, you see that. So whoever you want to get in touch with, you see them, or you, or let's say there's an athlete that you don't have currently signed, then you say, oh, you hear them saying, uh, somebody asking them in an interview, and you hear them saying, oh, I'm represented by the sports manager, right? That's who, and Sanjay is my agent, or, you know, whoever. So it's like having those, you, you're starting to see yourself. So Puvini, you would see yourself on the podium. You would see yourself being referred to by the media as the top triathlete in the country, and third in the world, wherever you're trying to be ranked, right? So it's just having, so visualization is another thing, getting your reps in. And the other thing, we call it mental rehearsal, but it's scripting. So scripting is where you basically, this you can do this before a mental rehearsal session. So just like you visualize your race before you run it, right, Puvini? 
right? They teach you that, right? So what you would do is you would write out what your race was going to feel like before you did it. And I mean, like, and how it ended. So, I mean, in mile 15, I was feeling so smooth. It was almost like I was on autopilot. And my mind started thinking about all the great victory of, you know, of crossing that finish line. And I was feeling so good. I feel like the last 15 miles, I know it's only 26.2, but the last, you know, miles just felt so easy. And when I crossed the finish line, I got to break the tape. And that was amazing, the feeling of breaking the tape. Because I've crossed the finish line before, but not the one that broke the tape, right? And I remember them saying, when I got interviewed afterwards, I just remember just feeling this overwhelming sense of calm. Even though I was tired, I didn't feel it. I just felt so joyous, right? And you write all that. That's called scripting. And you can do this every day, right? When I, Today, um, you know, uh, someone reached out to me on Instagram that I had never, that I, that I had been trying to reach out to for a long time. And they just said they heard about me. It was amazing. Now you like, but that didn't happen, Brent. If you do it enough days, I promise you it will, you know, so these are the type of things that you do, right? You just work on your mental fitness, get your reps in on a regular basis, but you're working on it constantly. And so when you have a negative thought, um, you, we talked about this before, you just replace it. So, okay. What's a better thought I can reach for? What's a better thought I can reach for? There, um, somebody says, like, oh, you know, you'll hear somebody in the grocery store. They'll say, oh, you know, people are dying. And you go, a lot of people are also alive. And you, don't say it, you don't say it to that person. Your job is not to correct them. Okay, please don't. I'm going to tell you, don't do that. I don't want you to get into arguments, okay? But you're going to say that to yourself. A lot of people are also alive and healthy and well, right? So my condolences, but a lot of people are alive and healthy and well. Whatever you need to do to start training your mind around what's good here, what's good here, what's good here. This isn't glossing over what's bad. This is just knowing that that exists, but I don't necessarily need to focus on it because it's going to, it's, it, when I give it more attention, it becomes more powerful. When I give it less attention, it becomes less powerful. And I believe in the way, in the momentum of the universe, if we're all focusing on people, death and dying and sickness, then we attract more death and dying and sickness. So I don't want death and dying and sickness to come to my door. They talk about in the Bible, the plague passing your house because you had to mark your house so it would pass your house. Well, you want to help pa it pass your house? Don't talk about it. Don't think about it. Don't give it the energy that everybody else is giving it. So those are the type of things that it doesn't mean that you're ignoring it. You're just focusing elsewhere. That's all. You're just diverting attention away from that momentum and putting it somewhere else so that other people want to concern themselves with it. They will find it and it will reach their door. But you don't, you know, say, not in my house. My house, as for my house, I'm clean. As for my house, we're safe. As my, for my house, we are healthy. Now, that doesn't mean I, don't, I want other people not to be healthy or clean or safe. It just means that I'm claiming what I need to for my house. And then when I get to a place that I can hold the space for other people, I want to see. And you need to see your neighbor's house that way. And you need to see your grandma's house that way if she doesn't live with you. You need to see everybody you love's house that way and not be like, oh, but my grandma's older and she could be susceptible. And, you know, like, what? Why are you focusing on that? If she's fine, then focus on that she's fine. Right? But that, these are the type of things. So that's how you practice it. Um, every day exercise this as much as you exercise those legs, exercise that as much as you exercise those arms, exercise this as much as you exercise, but everywhere you can, you need to be working on mental fitness. What is the content of your conversation? Are you visualizing? Are you scripting? And are you taking 100% responsibility for your life and responding? So those are the things I would say. Uh, I think uh, since you said like, you know, we should like, you know, live in the present moment. This is something that I shared on my Instagram. Okay. So this is, this is a quote uh, told by Lord Buddha and it says, don't look, look into the past. It brings you tears. Don't look, look into the future because it brings you fear. So live in the present moment so that, you know, you can enjoy, you can feel it, you know, how it yes. feels in the present. Okay. I, I, the, the, the question that I wanted to ask you, you basically answered, you know, how, how visualizing works, because like I'm currently reading this book about, uh, you know, uh, visualization techniques to reach your true prote potential. So right. I, I, you actually answered my question, but I have one more question, which just came up okay. to my mind before we finish. I want to ask you this. So now in the, in the recent uh, situation in gymnastics in US. Simone Biles. Okay, so, 
yes and uh, i i i kind of felt like you know the the emotional pressure or like the 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 pressure of you know being in an international stage for a very young athlete okay so i feel that is like a very very uh, what do you call it uh, it's since i didn't really like you know uh, get to this question i'm not sure how to ask you this uh, so it's basically like how do you advise someone who's like a teenager on how they should handle this kind of pressure when it comes to international championships like say they might be representing their country at the age of 14 or they might be going to the olympics at the age of 12 we saw so many athletes at in that right. age you know competing as divers gymnasts so likewise we we saw a lot of potential like you know even like they they won competition but the emotional pressure and that that uh, pressure of you know training every day training so hard how do you you know advise someone to actually manage this kind of situation yeah so of course it's interesting that you ask about young people because nobody has ever usually prepared for the pressure of being the world's number 1 or to be on the the international stage and for a lot of people we haven't been there so it's hard to prepare someone for something we haven't been in however we've all felt stress or pressure in our lives This is magnitude by a thousand, but this is a, what I would say is, and I think this is a new answer for me, um, but it's about self-awareness. So how do you prepare that child, that person, that adult? Because at the end of the day, we're all reacting from our own, uh, you know, fractured childhoods or whatever, right? Reacting from our own childhood trauma. My recommendation would be on, an, on, on, a, on a, the higher the stakes are, the more you need to know thyself. So give, helping that child develop self-esteem, helping them to know that outside and external forces are not important, that, um, and that getting to a place where we train ourselves not to pay attention to what other people think about us, good or bad, good or bad, because we can get addicted to the good and then we can be, you know, stuck by the bad. It's important that we recognize that the only opinion that, that matters is the opinion of ourselves. Now that's tough. But again, that's a process. It's not going to be overnight. But if we start early with our children in helping them develop, it's called self-esteem. That's the interesting thing about it. It's called self-esteem. But yet we're constantly trying to tell people how great they are. Like, oh, Puvini, you're so amazing. Sanjay, you're the best, right? And Sanjay feels that and Puvini feels that for about five minutes. And then after they get off this live and they come down from the high of this conversation, just like me, because I'm going to be like, this was great. Oh, my God, I loved it. I have to go back to my regular life. And my regular programming is going to resume. So if I haven't given myself the right programming, then I, it doesn't matter all the things you tell me. And this is why you have mental illness and mental health challenges, because the higher you go up the ladder, the more you get this cacophony of feedback, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And, you know, they love you. They're putting you on all their news stations. They're sticking mics in your face and, oh, my God, what did you do? You're amazing. And then you have one mistake and they're like, what the hell happened? And so you're just up and down on this, as, as Puvini said earlier, the emotional roller coaster. So my recommendation is to, again, unsubscribe from that and decide for you. It's an Um, and, and helping that child develop, and this adult, develop a sense of self. Who are you? How do you, what's your love language? What do you need? And who is around you? What environments are you in? Putting that child in that right environment. If they were in an environment where they're being bullied or whatever the case is, how do we help them with that? How do we get them into a different environment if we can? Different things like that, helping them to process, to learn how to handle themselves and you need to as the adult who's in the life of that child whether you be the agent the manager the the, the parent the, the 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 uncle whoever you need to be the one that is actually doing that work yourself so that you're not projecting onto that child you know you know you're the country's pride we're all counting on you that's a lot to put on the shoulders of anyone of any age 
So it's important, it's particularly a child whose brain isn't fully developed until the age of 25, and who's still working on knowing themselves when most of us are still working on knowing ourselves at whatever age. So it's, I think it's just a process, but the more you can help that child get to know themselves and remind them who, do, you know, because we're constantly telling them who they are. How are we helping them know who they are? And, and so it's, that's the thing. Like we're constantly, I, I call it pretty girl syndrome. Some of the people that have the lowest self-esteem are some of the most attractive people you will ever meet, right? They're gorgeous. It's like the top model in Sri Lanka. She probably doesn't like herself very much. But the problem with that is the reason is is people are constantly telling her she's beautiful, she's beautiful, she's beautiful. So she should have time to develop a sense of self. How do I feel about me? Ever since I was little, people have been telling me I was beautiful. So how do I know who I am? That is what we need to do. And it's the same thing with athletes. Ever since I was little, everybody was telling me I was great. Now if I'm not great, who am I? Naomi Osaka said that. So it's important that we work on, if I'm not a great tennis player, who am I? Who are you separate from that? Having that child have an identity outside of their sport would be one. Two, helping them love themselves regardless, but also knowing who they are and knowing how to talk to themselves through that process. Because... Uh, what happened with Simone Biles is something that can happen to any athlete, but that it happened in the sense that it gave a lot of athletes a voice. It helped them. Now they're talking about mental health. I had a coach call me from a college and said, oh my God, we're dealing with so much mental health issues this year. Because now athletes feel like they can talk about it. They can tell you what they've been struggling with. They can say, it's been tough out here. I'm having a hard time training by myself during lockdown. I need to talk about it. But everybody thinks, oh, you're a triathlete, Puvini. Suck it up. Come on, you got this. You did 26.2 miles and then a 112-mile bike race and a two, three-mile swim. You can do anything. No, I'm a human being. Yes, I can do all of those things, and I can be sad some days. And I can have a hard time some days. And that's okay. But again, we talked about this before. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. I don't have to suffer if I, I only suffer if I suffer in silence. If I let the steam out of the kettle, then it doesn't need to, you know, do this with the top, right? So if I learn to allow some of that steam out, then it's a healthier place. But what happened with Simone Biles happened because she's the world's number one. She's the hope and pride of America. You have, you're putting us on the map. And she did that, and she did that, and she carried it as long as she could. And then it comes like, I don't feel safe. I don't, I can't handle this. This is not, I can't do this right now. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with her not doing a vault so that I can be happy. I don't need that. And if I do, then I need to check in with self. Something's wrong with me. It's not about her. Like, why do I need to tell about to put herself in danger so I can be entertained? So, or I can feel good about America. Why do I need to feel good about my country because of an athlete's performance? If I like my country, then I should feel good about my country, not because of an athlete, right? She's not, her job is not to make me proud to be an American, right? So I think it's just those kind of things. Check in with yourself where you're asking too much of an athlete too, as the, as the adult, as the loved one around that, or even as the fan. Have you actually gotten to know Puvini the person? Or do all you care about is, hey, and, and talk to your athletes also, Sanjay. I, I, Sanjay Puvini. Talk to any athlete you know. And you, yourself as an athlete, talk about things other than your sport. When people ask you how you are, don't just ask about, oh, well, you know, I'm training. You know, I'm doing stuff. I got the things. I'm doing the things with the sports. Did I mention I'm a sport athlete person? Did I mention I was running yesterday and biking and swimming and you know, uh, boxing and, and, and throwing things and doing whatever. Yeah, okay, we get it. But the, the thing is, you train the public how to talk to you, and they train you, right? So we can train them that there's other things to me. Did I mention that I'm also a business owner and also a person and a woman who has feelings? And I'm, and if you're not married, Pumini, maybe I also want a spouse, you know? Like, I got some other things that I want going on, right? So it's, it's, it's helping yourself to have a a multifaceted identity versus this one identity. So we have to help that athlete, you know, any athlete diversify their identity and we have to validate them as the person, not as the athlete. That's a huge part of helping them from the external. And then internally, we need to help them to do that themselves as well. So. True, true. Also, uh, I think I, I, I actually want a direct answer from you. It should be a yes or a no. Okay. okay. So, 
would you recommend a teenage athlete to compete in in an Olympics? Like you know, it's a big stage, and the pressure that they have it's immense. Would you recommend? I just want a yes or a no. That's all you want. You don't want me to say anything more than that. No, no, no. no. <laughs> we'll leave it yes. for the next conversation. Okay. Yes. yes. All right. Okay. Good. 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 Right. Okay. So Sorry, yeah, thank you. Did you see that? Did you try to tell me how to answer questions? Did you see that? Man, I tell you. I, I, I'm, I was actually thinking during the conversation, like, if we actually sat in front of each other as people, like, you know, we, we meet each yeah. other someday and we talk. I don't know how long we would need, like, you know, whether we would need, Seven like... Seven years. Seven years. <laughs> yeah. And then maybe, you know, if we're talking about this, I don't know if the conversation ever ends because I really love... <laughs> talking about mindset and and talking about this but i do understand people got places to go they gotta go to bed what time is it like, <laughs> late so i understand but I, yeah. I do want to know that this is not something you can solve in one life this is going the work is done after this call no matter how you feel yes. right now it's not about that it's not about the fact that i came and gave you whatever because ultimately, it's what you do after this call, and then the day after that, and then yeah, right, Deuce. And when, that's Marlon. That's my friend. This conversation okay. wouldn't end. end. This con- and Marlon, I didn't see you taking notes for me. I know it's not on the computer. It's not as easy for him. He takes excellent notes during a meeting that we have on the regular oh, basis. Oh, okay. So I'm messing with him. I'm messing with him. Uh, he's, he's his job is not to take notes during my lives. Uh, oh. But uh, it's definitely important that it's the work we do after. It's the work we do after this. I understand that I am not the key nor the solution to anyone over there, okay? I am only the key and the solution to my own life. What I say is only valuable based on what you determine is valuable. So you then take that information and you run with it or you go, that was a waste of my time and that's it. So it doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what I do. I know what I'm saying is valuable because I believe it. Right? So I have to believe it because Pluvini might be like, thanks, Sanjay, for making me sit here and listen to this lady for an hour and a half. I'm not saying you're saying that, Pluvini, but that, if that was how you felt, that's how you felt. That would be okay because I can't control that. All I can control is what I provide. And then what you do after is up to you. So, yeah, tomorrow when it's hard and I'm not around, that's going to determine who you are. That's going to determine what you want, not me. So that's the key. Who, you are the key. Just like I tell everybody, a Corolla or a Lamborghini, neither one moves without the key. It doesn't matter. The pristine machine, you know, oh, it's amazing. That, no, that's such a pretty thing. It's just a paperweight without a key. Doesn't matter. Doesn't do anything. It's not fancy until you make it fancy. So y'all got to do it. Great. So I think we, we have to uh, give you a pause and then probably next conversation that we are going to have, it's going to be something very different. I will talk to you about that. And okay. uh, let's see how we can work things out to, you know, get you on board with us, with Sports Manager, where you can yeah. help much more personally towards athletes, you know, their I mindset. Because, because what I want is actually to create that mindset that you have to our, our community in Sri Lanka. Because that is what we feel that is lacking here in, in athletes here. So I think uh, this will work out in some good way for both of us. And also, and thank you to everyone who joined our program today uh, for your comments, your questions. Puvini, thank you for your time. Breen, as always, amazing. And uh, your information, I'm sure most of them will really grab it, you know, uh, into their hearts. They'll make sure that they practice this every day because I actually had an athlete uh, who was watching this. I wanted he, to get him on board for a, for a for a question because I work with him like you know on a daily basis. He ca- he comes to my place to train with me, so I know his mindset, and that is something that I see that you are trying to give it to a larger community in much more informative way where he is already practicing it. So I wanted to get him on board also, but. Thank you very much, Bree. And I would tell everyone to uh, subscribe to uh, Bree's podcast, uh, Mental uh, Advantage Podcast, and we'll make sure that she retains as the number one sports podcast in Sri Lanka. 
And uh, yes, yes, yeah. we need that. We need that. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we need that. We need that. We definitely yes. need that. We'll keep that going. We'll keep the streak yeah, going on. Yeah, I know. Until you know. Guys, the 14 people listening, just so you know, or the 12 people, whoever still here, uh, there is the the second most downloads I've ever gotten from any country is Sri Lanka. So thank you to the Sri Lanka. Oh. So yes, the United States is number one, and then Sri Lanka is number two. And I've never been to Sri Lanka. I only know Sanjay. And wait, you told me what to say. Arun, what did you tell me to say? Oh no, tell me again. Are you the, born? Are you born? Okay, are you born? So, so are you born? Are you born is welcome and hi, and then uh, you can say, uh, "Is two T is thank you." Okay, say it again. Is two T. Is two T. Is is so I oh, is, 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 is two yeah. T. Is two yes. T. Yes. Great. Okay, great. Is great. Is two T. All right. Is two T. So all the people that uh, download the podcast, if you are interested. Please grab the podcast and share it with one person in Sri Lanka. The link is in my bio, YouTube or app, whichever when you prefer. But in, uh, my downloads are through Apple. That's what I'm talking about. Sri Lanka, it was Apple. But if you like YouTube and you like to see it, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. All that is linked in bio on Instagram. If you're not already following me, yes, follow her because no, she puts kidding. a lot of why? good information why? Why there. Why But no, I'm just kidding. So anyway, thank you to everybody. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you, Vinny. This was amazing. I am. It is not lost on me how you are being generous with your platform with me. So I am taking it as an honor, not as a right. Or um, so I do appreciate it, and it's too easy to both of you. Also, I'm very grateful to have you here, and also I I hope we can build this uh, relationship to a very long relationship that we are going to have with you, and. Uh, Thank you very much for all the information that you provide to our athletes and to people who are watching today. Yes, thank you, Vin. Uh, let's let's see what's next for us, and uh, I'll, I'll talk to you very soon. Yes, thank you so much. All right, take care then. Have have a good day. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Bhuvini. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you so much, Sanjay. Take have care. Nice Bye. Bye. So everyone thank you very much for watching and we are grateful for all of you being there to support Bree and uh, to you know get her knowledge and information from her towards your performances and we hope that next session will be much more personal so uh, follow us if you are not following us and uh, keep your notifications on so that you get alerts from us uh, about our programs So take care everyone have a good night and make sure to uh, stay safe